You're blackmailing me? Blackmail is such an ugly word. I prefer extortion. The X makes it sound cool. X has long stood unopposed as the coolest letter of the alphabet. Having made a fool of its only potential competitor, Z, by mimicking its sound like a mocking raven, it's the only letter that can convey meaning all on its own, apart from A, a smug bastard. But the meaning X holds in its outstretched arms and legs is beyond anything mere mortals like A could manage. X gon' give it to you. What? X is used less as a letter than it is a symbol, and its meanings are as paradoxical as they are broad. A wrong answer, adult content, when you've made too many films in a franchise and want to downplay it. X both reinforces absence and electrifies objects with meaning, writes Laura Kelly in The Atlantic. And fellow writer Emily McCrary Ruiz Esparza expands, the same symbol capable of erasure, prohibition, and restriction is equally capable of identification, rebellion, and expansion. X is cool because it refuses to commit. I mean, everyone's always saying their X is avoidant attached. It leaves us on edge, alert. So rare in average words, writes Jonathan Green in The Independent. Its appearance makes us jump, however briefly. A small fright is, however, befitting, given X's association with fearful things. Even its position so far into the alphabet conjures the fringes of civilization. Out there with the rest of the freak letters. Why is she always in the splits? But the threat it poses is possibly underpinned by a preceding association, that of the unknown. Always terrifying. Who knows what's in the unknown? Monsters, probably. But the unknown can be as tantalizing as it is fearful. Or you can trade it all in for what's in this box. The box! The box! With an origin in mathematics, writer Karen Olson concludes that, one way or another, X has come to stand for not only what we don't know, but what we're seeking. For sex shops and invisible rays and marked spots where treasure lies hidden. This tension between danger and yearning forms the cross-section of Ty West's 2022 horror film, X. Said during the advent of home video, X concerns itself with the two genres most maligned in cinema and most benefited by VHS, horror and porn, being of the former and about the latter, and draws a parallel between this newfound freedom of artistic distribution and an increasing sexual agency, an interest in expressing and exploring bodies. Bodies being something that horror also tends to have a stake in, figuratively and Literally. Meaning that if porn is a genre for expressing agency through the body, horror is the genre to negate it, mirroring the on-screen conflict between a liberated youth and conservative Christian values that seek to restrict and deny. X, after all, is also a symbol for Christ. And for no. Though true to its boomerang shape, X comes back around to refuse this refusal. Just say no to know. But just as the symbol pulses with the excitement that lies beyond itself, we also see something more desperate, rabid, and ruthless in the pursuit of personal fulfillment. Because you got that X factor. The X factor. Now understood as an innate, ineffable quality synonymous with stardom, has a perilous undercurrent even beyond the familiar trappings of fame and reality TV. A phrase originally used by the military to describe a payment premium added to salaries, accounting for the possibility of things you can't put a price on. Like death. Death lingers over West X, and not just the swift, bloody, untimely kind, but also a slow, inevitable decline. Not just of aging, but of unfulfilled dreams. The fear of not making it. That opportunity will pass, and that everyone was right to laugh at your liberal arts degree. No, I'm a star! This transience is another quality of X as a symbol. Given its illusory nature, its definition always out of reach and so always potentially in flux. A simultaneous reminder of not only what we stand to gain, but what we stand to lose. If you're an X something, it's something you once were, but are no longer. Even the rise, for those who make it, is no protection from the potential to fall. But writer Lillian Crawford considers film theorist André Bazin's description of cinema as a form of embalming, in relation to the characters of Maxine and Pearl, both played by Mia Goth in X and its subsequent prequel. This is what the camera offers, celluloid as formaldehyde, a perpetual display of youth and ecstasy. 
of potential, in contrast to one of the most ephemeral substances, female stardom. Controlled by the men who, Crawford notes, operate the projector, hold the camera, and make the casting decisions. We're looking for something different, you know, younger and blonde. X has long had a confrontational role in the history of control and oppression, from a democratically cast vote to a symbol of those denied a voice and a name. He calls himself Malcolm X. What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Here, X is a protest against the names and identities that were stolen under slavery, and a reclamation of the power it was originally used to deny. As Emily McCrary Ruiz Esparta points out, X is the letter Malcolm's ancestors would have used to sign their names in any rare moments of agency afforded to them, if ever, in a double erasure of their identity. It's relevant here to mention one of Miriam Webster's definitions of X, to obliterate. Along with its assignment to danger and mystery, this use of X as insurrection has no doubt contributed to its mythology, a social cachet which by the 90s was ripe for exploitation. Stella Bugby writes in the New York Times that, for marketing purposes, X had a certain cool. It conferred a rejection of authority. The letter defined the decade, even labeling the generation that came of age within it. But this commercial application has more in common with yearning for the X factor than the possession of it. You can't evoke the countercultural associations of X just by invoking its name, no more than you can make something cool just by claiming it is. Bugby notes that Elon Musk's X.com originally emerged in the X still having a moment year of 1999, and he's been trying to say how do you do fellow kids ever since. His attempt to rebrand PayPal as X failed after fellow executives introduced a new no Elon's policy, but he went on to launch Tesla Model X, SpaceX, X Holdings, XAI, X his child, because now there's no one to stop him just like if there was no one to stop a toddler from eating cake for breakfast. And finally, x.com became the domain of the site formerly known as Twitter, perhaps the acquisition most defined by yearning. He wants to be where the people are, wants to see, wants to see them dancing. And it's easy to see how this deployment of X as a symbol falls short. Bugby suggests that it's as if Musk is begging the world to remember his prime years when he was starting to build his empire. I got better things to do than suffer this embarrassment. It's foolish to think you can harness something that is, by definition, undefinable. You can call a horse a unicorn if you strap a cone to its head, but you won't find any magic. And just because you draw an X doesn't mean there's gold. But there possibly is a reason behind this choice. Aside from the X makes it sound cool. Laura Kelly reports in The Atlantic that the rebrand, Musk has said, is a step towards transforming Twitter into an everything app. And the letter X, its precise meaning unknown, has the potential to be anything. And so it follows everything. Expanding and engulfing until there's nothing that doesn't sit under its moniker. A dangerous kind of power that again returns to that Merriam-Webster definition of X. To obliterate. The internet itself embodies this shift from anything to everything. In the early days, the potential, the unknown, was precisely what made it fun and exciting. Now each corner has been mapped and plotted. The use of X by an aspiring megacorporation epitomizes exactly what we've lost. There are no treasure maps anymore. No possibility, no excitement, no innovation. X marks the spot, and all we dig up is garbage. When trying to recall a time that being online was fun, unencumbered by anonymous trolling, automated recommendations, or runaway monetization schemes, Carl Chaker writes in The New Yorker that it was a long time ago, before social networks became the dominant highways of the internet, centralizing and homogenizing our experiences through their own opaque and shifting content sorting systems. This is where everything and anything are at odds. Once something is everything, we lose the chance for anything else. Despite the dominant narrative of X as an enigmatic free spirit, it's also evidence of this desire for control, for domination. So uncomfortable are we with unknown quantities that, as Macquarie Ruiz Esparza concludes, we insist on giving a name to that which cannot be named. And it's only a short walk from naming to owning. Which I did also have a video on, but apparently Studio Ghibli had their own things to say about ownership, so <clears throat> But in The Semiotics of X, linguist Jamin Palki argues that our entanglement with X goes deeper than even this essential urge. 
recalling entrenched body memories that involve our extremities, extended at extreme angles to form an extreme posture. A posture that is approximated across a wide range of experiences, many of which are extreme opposites. A signal of severest warning or a symptom of triumphant elation. A show of reverential love or a sign of blood-curdling terror. A sign of arrogant bravado or a sign of humiliating defeat. But Pelkey quotes philosopher Marshall McLuhan to explain how these contradictions might not be so at odds. Every process pushed far enough tends to reverse or flip suddenly. This oscillation between the furthest reaches of experience then simultaneously provides balance and equilibrium, holding both polarities together in symmetry. After all, an X reversed or flipped is still just an X. In this way, X, the symbol of toxicity, of deviancy and technology, is equally tied to the natural world, its reversals harmonizing as a rise and fall, like a cycle or rotation, from joy to despair, from warning to celebration. It offers us anything, and threatens us with it, but reassures us that bad luck is balanced with good. And just because we strike rock today doesn't mean there isn't still treasure buried somewhere. This symbol of the future is maybe the most ancient of all, stretching out behind us as much as it does ahead, carrying the weight of our ancestors, our body memories, and coloured by all the mythology we've woven around its axes. X is the history of us, the human condition, our peaks and valleys, possessive, searching, and never satisfied and everything we're capable of. Creation, destruction, loss, and love. One more X I should mention. Exit. <laughs> Goodbye. X. 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 X.